Greetings and welcome back to room 303 and our talks with Walt as we are calling our reading of each of the different poems of the deathbed edition of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. We are now into Song of Myself, passage number 30. Now we have said that the larger section we're studying is passage 26 through 38, the poet's microscopic vision moving from the ordinary to the mystical. Certainly we've been witnessing this as we have been working through the last sections 27 through 30 which for us now culminates with passage 30, the power of touch, as we now finish this one. Now, to go back to an earlier comment from passage 4 of Song of Myself, I think it's the key line, both in and out of the game and watching and wondering at it, I witness and wait is the way that passage will finish. I think that's such a crucial, crucial idea. Why? Because here we're going to have Whitman ask the simple question, what have I learned from the experience that has been described earlier in passages 27, 28, and 29? And of course, that was a very sexual latent kind of description, and yet it can be read as something quite intellectual as well. What have I learned? What is the truth of all of this? That's where we're headed now with passage 30. But before we get there, just to remind at LearnStrong.net, my hope is that you've been following our stuff, the Talks with Walt playlist, and that you've worked through the inscriptions, 24 poems, the 19 sections of Pomenoc, and of course the last 29 sections of starting uh, of Song of Myself as we now turn to passage 30. And of course, when we ask the question, what has been learned, it won't shock us that the answer in a word that will be given, though not actually in the passage just inferred is, of course, the word democracy. There's a reason why Whitman is the great poet of democracy, and he will play that game out now in passage 30. And this is the way he says it. All truths wait in all things. They neither hasten their own delivery nor resist it. They do not need the obstetric forceps of the surgeon. The insignificant is as big to me as any. What is less or more than a touch? Logic and sermons never convince. The damp of the night drives deeper into my soul. Only what proves itself to every man and woman is so. Only what nobody denies is so. A minute and a drop of me settle my brain. I believe the soggy clods shall become lovers and lamps, and a compend of compends is the meat of a man or woman. And the summit and flower, there is the feeling they have for each other. And they are to branch boundlessly out of that lesson until it becomes omnific, and until one and all shall delight us, and we them. Now it is significant that we will begin with the word all. I told you guys when we were messing around with starting from Pomenoc, it's true that a lot of people say that the best version of Song of Myself is the 1855 version. It's hard to debate it for all the reasons we've already discussed. Some of the lines that have been edited out that we've already commented on, dude, these are some amazing lines that didn't make it into the deathbed edition. However, we have to share what Whitman said about his own collection of poems when he said, the deathbed edition is the way that they should be read. And while you don't have to read Leaves of Grass from the very first word come of the epigraph all the way through to uh, fancy at the very last poem, it's a pretty interesting project, and some of you are starting to see there's all these echoes, right? To quote that line from Burt Norton, T.S. Eliot's Four Quartets, my words echo thus in your mind. We get these echoes, and it takes us back, of course, to starting from Pomenoc, passage 7. Do you remember it? Omnis, omnis. Do you remember that? that? That idea of the all as being not just collected, but the all itself. All truths wait in all things. So now we're going to talk, obviously, epistemology, ontology, our, our big five, psychology, sociology, the question of theodicy. Why is it that evil has to happen at all? He says all of this can be comprised in simply an understanding of truth as being in all things. Now, of course, this will take us at 3a to Keats's Ode on a Grecian Urn, Beauty is Truth, Truth, Beauty, that's all you know on earth and all you need to know. Notice all truths weighed in all things. Now, the argument that's going to be made, and it's a very democratic argument, is that experience is the only way that real truth is ever derived, as opposed to what? 
Well, logic chopping and lots of esoteric ideas. Whitman is a pragmatist. We're even going to mention at 3A at the end of this lecture that, J that James's uh, varieties of a religious experience have to, I think, be read alongside this passage 30. All truths wait in all things. They neither hasten their own delivery, we're going to get a, a, a word picture here of birthing, nor resist it. In other words, truth comes in the way in which it comes, and there is not truth but truths, right? They do not need the obstetric forceps of the surgeon. The, these, uh, these forceps would grab the head of the infant and sometimes pull out the infant, oftentimes causing certain kinds of damage because, in other words, it was a way to try and rush the birth. In other words, what is it that Whitman is saying? Truth will come in its own way in its own time. Calm. Like the, the symbolism of Sprouts from the earlier poem, 20, uh, 29. Let growth happen as growth would happen. And, of course, the insignificant. Now, this sounds very much like Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. You'll remember at the end, all things both great and small, right? The insignificant is as big to me as any. Now, this word big is an interesting word. Important, obviously, what he means, right? And then, although in the 55 edition, not in parentheses, the deathbed edition, what is less or more than a touch. And again, he loves these rhetorical questions that come back. In other words, everything that I learn through touching is all I need to know. I don't need to know any, anything more than that. And he'll ask almost like a rhetorical question, uh, what else could there be? What else does there need to be? Then, as if to drive the point home, he'll go to the word logic, only he'll join it with the word sermons. And now we're back to passage one, creeds and schools and abeyance. Notice here, he'll invert the creeds and schools so that it's logic, which we would obviously associate with schools, and sermons never convince. Now, it's this kind of radical epistemological uh, absolutism that Whitman will often be faulted for. What do you mean never convince? Logic and sermons never convince. Well, okay, let's say sometimes don't convince. No, no, never convince. Now, we're going to come to this idea a little bit later on in our study with what some argue is the greatest poem of all of Leaves of Grass, not Song of Myself, but Song of the Open Road. This is the way he says it. Here is the test of wisdom. And you know, I love this set of lines so much that I'm going to actually back up. I'm in, I'm in passage six, by the way, of Song of the Open Road. He says that now if a, perfect, if a thousand perfect men were to appear, it would not amaze me. And if a thousand perfect forms of women appeared, it would not astonish me. We'll wait to obviously exegete this later when we get to it. Now I see the secret of the making of the best persons is to grow in the open air and to eat and sleep with the earth. Here a great personal deed is Rome. Such a deed seizes upon the hearts of the whole race of men. It's a fusion of strength and will overwhelms law and mocks all authority and all argument against it and out of the lines that we want as constant we want to focus on for 30 here is the test of wisdom wisdom is not finally tested in schools wisdom cannot be passed from one having it to another not having it wisdom is of the soul is not susceptible of proof is its own proof applies to all stages and objects and qualities and is content is the certainty of the reality and immortality of things and the excellence of things. Something there is in the flow of the sight of things that provokes it out of the soul. And he finishes, Now I re-examine philosophies and religions. They may prove well in lecture rooms, yet not prove at all under the spacious clouds and along the landscape and flowing currents. By the way, the use of the word landscape will obviously draw us back to passage 29. In other words, there's things you have to learn through experience, and there's no amount of teaching that's going to get you there. We might say, of course, that when I heard the learned astronomer will be a passage here that will come back. What, what are we dealing with? Well, Whitman, as uh, we said, there's at least five of them. Whitman is pedagogue. Whitman is teacher, and he'll say it this way. The damp of the night drives deeper into my soul. The experience, of, in other words, the damp of the night, the longing to, to somehow understand things as you lie awake in bed at night. And then in parentheses, again, not in the 55 edition, only what proves itself to every man and woman is so. Here's the democracy, the democratic element. Only what nobody denies is so. In other words, let people debate 
about what the truth is, as we have said in, uh, in 303, there are obvious absolutes. One of them, you ain't met no 200-year-old person, which means what? Yeah, you only get to swing at the park for a few minutes, and then you got to go bye-bye to the van, as they were teaching you from the very earliest years. And the only way you got here, another absolute, is two people hooked up and exchanged fluids. That is an absolute truth. There is no debating that, at least not yet anyway, right? And to that degree, these truths are undeniable. Those are the ones that Whitman says we all kind of embrace and understand as being the most vital, the most important. And those have come to us how? Well, slowly over time. And when they finally do arrive, they leave us with a certain kind of moment of pause. Oh, yeah, that's true. But what does that mean? Well, if I only get to spend a few moments at the park swinging, why don't I enjoy it? Because I only get a few minutes. And obviously, that ability to end my swinging at the park will be better served if I've at least given some thought to how I can have a bit of happiness. So if a few Scooby snacks, even though they are an illusion, right? Notice he finishes now. A minute and a drop of me settle my brain. Now, of course, we've got all kinds of potential sexual language coming from passages 27, 28, and 29. I believe, now this will take us back to the opening line of passage 5, right? I believe in you, my soul. The other I am must not abase itself to you, and you must not be abased to the other. Um, here we are. I believe the soggy clods, because obviously we've had rain from passage 29, right? Clods shall become lovers and lamps. It's a, it's, I, I love how Whitman will join these two words, lovers and lamps. Obviously, the L sounds here. It's, a, it's, it's wonderful. Now, obviously, lovers takes us back to 26, 27, 28, 29. But this thing about lamps, it's one of the central motifs and symbols of Leaves of Grass, the idea about light, right? Lamps, key symbol. The, uh, by the way, we're going to get the soggy claws and the dirt under the boot soles by the very end of passage 52 of Song of Myself. And a compend of compends, that is to say, what is ultimate truth? Compend of compend, the compendium, right, is... The meat of a man or a woman. In other words, very materialistic, very much. What you need to know can be contained in your study of ontologically who it is that you are. Right? And a summit and flower. Notice how he's joining these pairs, lovers and lamps. Summit and flower, the top of a mountain, there's more grass. Right? There is the feeling they have for each other. Emphasis, of course, on the word feeling. And Notice the repetition in anaphoria of and, and, and. I believe, and then you've got this and, and, and. And they are to branch boundlessly. This idea of branching earlier was sprouting, right? Leaves of grass. Out of that lesson, Whitman the teacher, until it becomes omnific. Remember, we started with, starting from Pavanagh, passage 7, omnis, omnis, the all, the all. Here it's omnific, that is to say, all creating, and until, notice the repetition of the word until, one in the 55 version, it was everyone. And all shall delight us, we're back to the game of passage four, and we then. And then, of course, notice how passage 31 begins. I believe a leaf of grass is no less than the journey work of the stars, a famous, famous line from Leaves of Grass and, of course, Song of Myself. So as we finish here, let's just pay attention now at level 2A. What are the major messages that we want to play around with here? Well, truth is found through and by experience, right? And of course, we'll get to our Plato in a little bit as we finish here with our annotative work. At 2B, notice his construction of this I believe and then the and 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 of the anaphoria. Watch how he does this throughout Leaves of Grass. You'll, you'll see it. He'll begin, he'll begin to play around. Ironically, he says you can't prove it through books and school, and yet Whitman will use the very idea of the logic and the construction of the, uh, of the um, syllogism, as we'll refer to it, logic, right? At 3A, I mentioned James's varieties of religious experience, and I think that it's significant that we would marry that to this reading, but, and I mentioned Song of the Open Road, but I want to mention here Emerson's American Scholar, which is one of those real classic essays for us, and we've given full lecture on it here in 303. It's such an important idea. How do you come to know stuff? For example, I have some of you who are reading now every poem of Leaves of Grass up to this point with me saying, I thought I actually knew Whitman and Leaves of Grass because of a few things I had read. There is so much I didn't know. The only way I can know is to what? To do the reading, to do the investigation, to take the journey, 
if you will. Finally, we will ask this question at 3b, and we'll join 3a to 3b, because of course, Plato has his concerns about the senses being a way for us to come epistemologically to knowledge. You'll remember, shadows on the wall, we think that they're real when in fact they are not real. Whitman will say about that, yeah, but I'm pretty sure that most of the time experience is the way we come to the truths that really do matter for us. What do you think about this? Is it true that experience is how we come to truth? All right. Or in fact, are the senses sometimes somewhat suspect so that you have to figure out another way to get to the truth other than through experience itself? Well, we now finish with this mini section of, uh, as we said, 27 through 30, and we now turn to sections 31 through 33 within this larger section of 26 to 38. 31 through 33, we're going to get an amazing catalog, so we're going to come back to the cataloging element again, that listing that we've seen earlier in, um, in Song of Myself, and we're going to get all of the amazing things that Whitman will see in the most insignificant and small things. And of course, that means, hurrah, we get to talk about animals. Yay. Come back and we'll mess around with 31. Thank you.